I like to think of 1986 as the year that the IBM PC shifted into second gear. Now whilst the EGA standard of 16 colours was already well available, many games still held on to that 4 colour CGA. And of course the PC speaker was the only choice for sound, there was no sound cards for the PC. So in 1986 despite the new fancy 386 processor being out, a lot of games just didn't cut the mustard. And if you had a look at the other consoles and computers that were out in 1986, the Sega Master System, the Atari 7800, the Mac Plus, the Apple IIgs, the Amiga 1000, and of course the great games for the Commodore 64 just kept on coming. Games like Sentinel with their amazing 3D graphics. Where was the PC in all of this? Well, I'd have to say that it was somewhat languishing. Here are the best games of 1986. Number 10 gets Nightfire. Now if you've ever played Gorillas for Microsoft Quick Basic, then you'll be familiar with the premise. However, let this not dissuade you because remember that Bill Gates brought us Donkey.Base as his original game. Oh yes, this one here is far, far classier, a lot of fun. It's a two player game only, which is not as great, but the graphics are playable. It's certainly not the best graphics game you're going to see on today's list. Okay, it is a simple game, but I have trawled through hundreds of games for the IBM PC through 1986. And for me, it's all about fun. And this game is a lot of fun. So, if you're interested in just figuring out the angle, figuring out velocity, and shooting the hell out of your opponent, then Nightfire is just for you. Round 42. Now, Everybody out there was pretty much bored out of their minds on Space Invaders. However, this one had a slight twist to it, being that it used a very colourful graphics palette, which was sheer mastery at the time, because this was actually on CGA. What it used is a special uh, resolution, which was kind of like a half-screen resolution, and it allowed you to use the full 16 colour palette of the text mode. So the idea is you're, um, you're a little dude at the bottom of the screen and you're punching hell out of the baddies who get progressively more complex, uh, more noisy and also you have this little laser beam thing as well which you get a limited number of. That little laser beam is pretty handy when you're in a sticky situation because it will get the closest baddie to you dead. You don't even need to aim it up, it will just kick its ass. Round 42 by Elven Software Company in at number 9. If you go through websites like Moby Games and the equivalents, you'll find that there are just piles of sporty games from 1986. Don't know why it was such a sporty year, but anyway, sporting people out there must have been loving this year on the PC. At number 8 then is Two on Two, a lovely little basketball game. The graphics are a little bit finicky and that's probably why it's in at number 8. Uh, if it was a little bit more detailed and maybe the colour was a bit less, well, CGA-ish, then I might give it some more points. But other than that, it's a very playable little game. You are the offence or you're the defence, either way it's, it's great, you can play quite happily for about five minutes. The next game at number seven is Breakout. Yep, Breakout. We all know what Breakout is. And in fact Breakout probably came out around hmm, 1980 for the Atari 2600 in the arcades of course. And here we are in 1986 on the PC, so somewhat behind, but anyway, this game is in EGA and it's in the higher resolution mode of EGA. So it's Breakout, there's not an awful lot to say about it other than that it is controlled by the mouse. I'll also give a little hat tip to the game Dragons A Challenge in Chivalry, which had a kind of different twist on Breakout as well that came out this year as well. So you be the judge of which one is better. Have you ever desired to penetrate a fortress? Well, if you're the ninja, then perhaps you can. You need some good karate moves and to throw shurikens and daggers. But if you do, you can collect all the idols and kill some seriously bad dudes as well. Of course, your journey is probably going to be a bit psychedelic since you're on palette zero of CGA, but hey, who cares? 
Apparently there was a better coloured version which was somewhere but I couldn't find it in the dodgy websites that I was looking at. Now for some reason when this was released the Commodore user magazine gave it a rating of 4 out of 10 in November 1986. Now I feel that that's slightly unfair. This game somewhat a precursor maybe to the likes of Karateka which I'm sure you'll agree is better. However the game is very playable. I enjoyed it. There's nothing wrong with it. Play it. Maybe you too can penetrate the fortress. Just in case you haven't figured it out already, I'm originally from Scotland. Now apparently that makes me a whiskey swilling, haggis eating, kilt wearing, golf mad, caber tosser. What parts of that are true or false I will leave up to you. However, I will say that golf is not my forte. There was definitely a few firsts for this game. It was released for MS-DOS first eventually being ported to the Amiga Apple II GS, Atari 7800 and AST. It was also the first to give a golfer's point of view of the course, and it was the first game to come with an editor that allowed players to create their own tracks. The game featured tracks like Augusta National and Pebble Beach, and St Andrews as well in my home country. And it also used the popular three-click control system, whereby the first click starts the swing, the second sets the power, and the third sets the draw or fade. It's a very realistic game for its time. The graphics are crisp, being supportive of EGA. Now, if only I could play golf. Sid Meier was a guy who was simulator daft. And in 1985, 1986, 1987, he was just smashing the games out. I mean, he created so many simulators. This was one of the best ones though. This is Gunship, which is an AH-64 Apache helicopter combat flight simulator. Simulator's pretty realistic. It supports EGA graphics, so it looks a lot better than, well, I guess what it could look like. And the player controls an arsenal that includes laser-guided Hellfire missiles, a 30mm cannon controlled by helmet gun sights, clusters of bombardment rockets, even air-to-air -air missiles for duels with the enemy helicopters. Reviews of this game when it came out were extremely positive. In March of 1987, Computer Gaming World said, In conclusion, this reviewer heartily recommends Gunship. From a historical perspective, one must remember that gunships are only effective in areas that one has local air superiority. Who cares? The game's flaw, ground terrain visibility, is more than offset by the sheer pleasure in flying against and defeating the threat. A five-star rating is well deserved. So, go and get your gunship on. In at number three now is Commando. Now, I naively thought that this had something to do with the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. However, reading up, apparently that's completely inaccurate. This is around a super tough commando from the United Kingdom, I'm sure. In this vertical scrolling game, you're armed with a standard rifle and just a few grenades to chuck at your baddies, which just happen to be hordes of Nazis. These crafty little Nazis are wandering around in the open, but some have picked out hiding spaces. You can approach them from all different angles. Trees, rivers and bridges create a varied combat-like terrain. And of course, as the colour-ridden plethora of detail that is the CGA graphics here shows, no place is safe. Trees, rivers and bridges create a varied combat-like terrain and must be incorporated into your thinking. You can pick up extra grenades, those will definitely be required. Just have a look here at the Amiga graphics and then have a flip back to the CGA graphics. Amiga graphics, CGA graphics. The game's good fun, but I'll leave the rest to your imagination. In at number two is a game that probably needs no introduction. It is none other than Jordan Mechner's Karateka. Mechner was approximately 20 years old when he made Karateka. I don't know about you, but when I was 20 years old, I was finding lots of other interesting things to do. The game actually came out in 1984 on the Apple II, and potentially the graphics and also the gameplay was maybe slightly better on the 1 MHz 6502 machine. However, it's still an incredibly playable game on the IBM PC in CGA4 colours. 
Now, if you looked at games like Ninja, which we reviewed earlier on, you can see the difference in animation. Mechner was great at the details on this sort of stuff. The game opens up to see that Princess Mariko has been stolen away and put at the evil Akuma's fortress. Killing the baddies is, well, I guess a random punch of buttons on your keyboard on the left hand side to make an effective combination to knock them off. Clearly you can see this game is the precursor to the excellent 1989 Prince of Persia, but this game holds its own anyway. And all I would say is that the, uh, the gameplay gets a bit repetitive, there really is only two kinds of baddies. There are Akuma's henchmen and also the evil hawk. Karateka is truly a brilliant game, it had a great storyline and it defined a genre for years to come. If you haven't played Karateka's silky smooth gameplay, then make sure you do today. Fanfare! Do -do 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 -do! The very last game at number one is Sierra Online's Space Quest. Before I get rolling on the review for this game, what I will say is there's a hat tip in there for King's Quest 2 II and 3, which came out around the same sort of time. And of course, let's not forget the Black Cauldron and Donald Duck's Adventure Playground. Moving all of that aside though, it has to be one of my most favourite franchises in the Quest series from Sierra Online. Space Quest 1, the Sarian Encounter, was a real departure from the oldie worldy kind of games. When Scott Murphy and Mark Crow pitched the idea to their boss Ken Williams, Ken looked at them and flatly said, not on your Nelly. But that didn't stop them, they mocked up a demo and fortunately Ken Williams changed his mind. Ultimately the Space Quest franchise spawning yet another five games. The game's hero, Roger Wilco, is of course the space janitor. Wilco wakes up in the broom closet after a nice little nap to find that the ship that he is staffed on, the starship Arcada, has been under attack and the evil Sarians have boarded and have killed off most of the crew. The all-powerful star generator has been stolen, the self-destruct sequence has been initiated and our friendly janitor needs to make it off the starship before it's too late. With your assistance, it can be done. Once you get off the starship, you can make yourself onto the planet Corona, and from there you need to overcome traps, monsters, and find a way back to the Sarian mothership before your home planet of Xenon is blown to pieces. It's a fantastic game, it's really good fun. My only criticisms, it's very short, it's too easy, and there's multiple opportunities to get stuck on a dead end. But it's humour and charm has brought me back not once, not twice, but three times to play this excellent game. Thanks Ken for making it possible. Well that's about it for 1986. There were lots of good games that also came out of this year and for various reasons they didn't make it into my top 10. Games like The Slugger, I'm rubbish at baseball, I don't understand it. World Games and also Summer Games 2 from Epix. Tetris. It was a poor man's game of Tetris to be fair. Shanghai Mahjong, Livingston I presume, which I was rubbish at, Marble Madness, which is infuriatingly difficult but really cool, Alter Ego, and also Bop and Wrestle. These games almost cut the mustard, but not quite for my rating of the top 10 PC games of 1986. And there we have it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Either way, I love reading your comments please leave them below. And of course, if you like my stuff overall, please consider subscribing. I do lots of different retro -y stuff, not just computer gamey stuff. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Ta-ra!